Hello and welcome to BW TV. Today I have with me Mr. Shridhar Rangayan, who is founder and festival director of Kashish. Welcome, Mr. Shridhar. Hi, nice to be here with you, Resham. Uh, been a pleasure to uh, hopefully we could have a long chat and we got to bring up some important issues for sure. It's absolutely my pleasure to be talking to you. Before we actually start, let me tell you, Kashish, about a little more about Kashish, uh, which is a South Asia, South Asia biggest LGBTQ film festival. With the Pride Month around the corner, this four day long festival will screen some of the great LGBTQ themed movies by the filmmakers across the world. It's my ab absolute pleasure to be speaking with you, Shrida. Uh, Shrida is an Indian filmmaker and a gay activist. He has been one of the front rank leaders in the LGBTQ movement in India and has contributed immensely towards the growth of awareness about sexual minorities in India. His films, The Pink Mirror, Yours Emotionally, have been considered groundbreaking because of their realistic portrayal of the largely closeted Indian gay community. Uh, and talking about this conversation, we'll largely focus on how uh, this festival uh, got conceptualized, what was the idea behind and how over the period of years uh, it has evolved. Uh, and in your point of view, how movies and cinemas has become crucial mediums of communication and uh, in that respect of great, great movements. Um, over to you, Mr. Rangan, uh, if you could tell us what was the idea behind before, it, before starting this whole movement of uh, film festival and what was the concept behind? So I've been a filmmaker. Uh, uh, I, I've, I've been a filmmaker for like, like almost 25 years now. I made a lot of uh, 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 non-LGBTQ films before. Uh, basically, I made television uh, series, uh, uh, worked on Krishna Arjun, Rishte, Gubbare, so many different television. But then I realized at that point of time, there was no space for LGBTQ stories in mainstream television uh, domain. So basically, myself and Saga started our own production company called uh, Solaris Pictures. And we basically produced, uh, uh, I think, India's first ever drag queen film called Gulabi Aina, The Pink Mirror in 2002, way long back. I don't know whether you were bored at that point of preparation. <laughs> it was way long back in 2002. We basically made this film. And the film basically uh, um, traveled to 80 film festivals across the world, but uh, got uh, refused a census certificate in India. Uh, it still does not have a census certificate, Gulabi Aina, the pink, you know. But what happened was it kind of opened up doors for me to uh, kind of travel across the world uh, to film festivals, screen my film, have dialogues and discussions. And that was a huge uh, uh, impetus for me to understand the whole cinematic space and the whole film festival space per se. So um, 2002, we made this film and then a couple of films more later, in 2009, uh, uh, what happened was the Delhi High Court read down Section 377, you know, saying that it's not criminal anymore to be gay or lesbian or transgender in India. You know? That was a huge verdict for us, you know. And uh, basically, we got the courage at that point of time to say that we can do a mainstream uh, LGBTQ film festival in a mainstream theatrical space. There have been LGBTQ film festival in Mumbai and also in India, Kolkata, Bangalore in the past, but they have been held in basically cultural institutions like Alliance Francais, Gauthier Institute, or in colleges like National College Bandra. But Kashish became the first ever film festival, LGBTQ film festival to be held in a mainstream theater. So uh, I kind of wanted to bring that whole experience of uh, me traveling to film festivals and screening my films. And the whole community brings together, not just of LGBTQ people, but people who love cinema. You know, I love that whole experience of, and I want to bring it back to India. And that's how we started Kashish. And we are a member of, uh, we are, a, I think, 10 member team uh, when we started Kashish in 2010. And um, we first uh, approached PBR Cinema. Uh, they were really super scared because before that, the only incident of having a LGBT film screened at the theater was the film Fire, when theaters were burned down at that point of time. So they were super scared. Uh, like, I mean, if you're holding an LGBT film festival for five days, showing hundreds of LGBT films, what will the society think at that point of time? You know? But we assured them that we will do it with all proper protocols. You know? We will get permission from the INB ministry like any other film festival. We'll do all the rules and regulations. We'll go to the police station, uh, of, uh, submit the FIR. Everything will do exactly as any other film festival. And uh, that's how we did. Uh, and also we assured them that we are a team of LGBT people, but we also have other professionals. I'm a filmmaker. There's somebody from the marketing profession. There's somebody from PR. Yeah, all the other professions are there. So that's how we started. 2010, we started Kashish. And it was a small one-screen theater of 125 feet. 
and we pretty much filled up so much. People stood in long queues there. And then we shifted to Cinemax, which was the 100, 230 seater next year. And then 2014, uh, we shifted to Liberty Cinema. And Liberty Cinema is 1,200 seats. And we pretty much fill up 1,200 seats. It's at the bachelor, believe me. So having, basically the reason we started also was for the LGBTQ community to see their own uh, lives reflected on the big screen. Earlier, they used to be watching on mobile phones or laptop or something, but to watch these films on the big screen, along with your friends and family members and colleagues, it's a joy. It gives me even goosebumps even to just think about that. You know? And then also for the non-LGBTQ community members to understand what LGBTQ lives were about. That's the yeah. reason we want to place it in the mainstream theater when people across board can come and watch these films without any, it's not a like community event, it's a larger event than just a community event. You know? So uh, we have had basically over the past year, many years, we have had 30% of the audience being from the non-LGBTQ community. For them, it's a great experience because a lot of times in the earlier years, people had myths and misconceptions. Who are, who are these gay people? Who are the lesbian people? Who are these transgender people? We never met them. So a lot of times they have these misconceptions and we, when they come to Kashish and these, see these films and meet LGBTQ people in a safe space, they go back, they completely change. Their mindset is completely changed. They go back, they take back a different viewpoint. So that has been kind of, a, a, I would say for the, uh, for the LGBTQ people, it's a celebration. The non-LGBTQ yeah. community members, it's a life-changing moment, actually, yeah. that's what I would say. Of course, so towards the end of uh, what has already been happening is always impact making. So it gives you it gives you goosebumps till now. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, taking uh, this huge movement from like a, a series years of now. years, you must have yeah, you must have seen a lot of transformations across in terms of operations, in terms of your relationships with PVR cinemas, uh, other filmmakers, other professionals in the industry, and of course the audience, the the consumers of. Uh, cinema and movies. What trans What major transformations would you like to share uh, that you have witnessed? So Kashish has pretty much been part of this movement towards uh, from invisibility to visibility. As I said, from 2010 onwards, he's been holding this film festival every year for the last yeah. uh, 13 years. We're going to be doing the 14th edition. So we have seen, we have been part of this change. Basically, when people are more visible now, from 2009 onwards, the LGBTQ community came out more openly. And 2013 verdict by the Supreme Court pushed us back a little bit. It was a negative verdict. But then 2018 verdict, which was the final verdict of Supreme Court decriminalized homosexuality, that was a huge verdict for us. Oh. So that opened up a lot of doors for us to basically, uh, not just uh, the Kashish Film Festival, for audience to, to come to Kashish without any anxiety or fear. Earlier there was a bit more anxiety. People would come, cover his scarf or wear goggles and come and sit quietly in the corner. Now people come dressed as they want to. It's a safe space. People come dressed in colorful costumes. It's like a, a, a like a med gala actually. Kashi is like a mini med gala actually. So it's a beautiful experience. And uh, also the film uh, films have changed. Like if you just talk about the Indian films being made from 2010 to 2023 now. So the, initially the films were about who am I, what am I. Uh, kind of angst and anxiety of LGBTQ community members. You know, they always thought more suicide and deaths and that kind of films were being shown then, you know, because those were the films being made. But now I think there's a lot more happiness and joy in the films. It, it, most of the films end with happy endings, actually there's no negative endings. Uh, there's some which you don't show. So, uh, and in the first year we had around 23 Indian films and we showed all of them, you know, Indian LGBTQ film. And this over the years- like 13 years ago. Yeah, yeah, 13 years ago, 20 to 20 LGBTQ films which were submitted to us and we showed all of them. And over the years now, we have been getting almost 70 to 80 to 90 Indian LGBTQ films being submitted. There's so many being made, believe me, you know. They do not, the tragedy is they do not come into the mainstream space. They remain in the film festival yeah. space. You know? So we are showing, I think this year, 33 Indian films, uh, uh, three feature films, many short films, so it's going to be and many documentary films. So we're going to be really show. Uh, I would say unearthing, unearthing these LG, Indian LGBTQ films and showcasing it with Kashish. And after that, also we're giving it a life. What we do is we uh, program around ten or fifteen of these Indian LGBTQ films across film festivals across the world. We take it to other film festivals, and also we put it on platforms like uh, a Disney Hotstar, MX Player, and also the other uh, OTT platforms across the world. We basically distribute them and give some of the money back to the filmmakers. 
for the filmmakers is a joy. Showing it at Kashish is a big joy already, but uh, getting Bali by distribution and other film festival networks, it's a huge thing. So Kashish has been instrumental in not just uh, uh, showcasing their films at the festival, but also distributing. And also we are now producing films. We have made six films in the past where Kashish has been producing with Lotus Visual Productions in UK um, with a Q Dishti film grant. So we also into production and distribution of LGBTQ films mainly. Yeah. Good to know. So good to know. Um, this has been a part of uh, celebration and joy you always have when you work on this uh, whole uh, festival. Uh, but if you can talk about a little bit more on the challenges part of it, as an activist, as a filmmaker, what what are some of the major, some of the uh, roadblocks, if I can say, which are difficult to uh, like pass through or cope up with just because these are the major challenges. Also, when you rightly pointed out, because these are the festivals which are in itself are instrumental, surely, and they are creating a much larger impact. But the challenge is they are not yet into the mainstream right now. Uh, you are on your way to uh, make them, bring them into mainstream, but what are some of the challenges? So we have, uh, uh, right from this, uh, the first year was a challenge to just get a film festival in the mainstream theatrical space. That was a huge challenge. You know? And yes. over the years, it's always been a challenge to get uh, sufficient money uh, from sponsors. Basically, the film festival runs on three levels. One is the sponsorship by sponsors and also the uh, registration, whatever the money, uh, mm -hmm. and crowdfunding by uh, donors. But uh, these, the last two components are going to be very small, but mainly we have been relying on sponsors to basically give, contribute to the film festival to make it happen. And that has been a challenge over the years. But uh, thankfully, many sponsors have stood by us over the last, some of them have been stood for the last 10 years with us every year. They bring some money, not a big money. So it's not like a big, uh, uh, we don't have the, uh, the most of the companies are coming uh, with us for the HR budget, you know, uh, human resources budget, not the marketing budget. So the, we want Kashish to be a marketable place when the brand should come, uh, they should be able to advertise. And that's where we hope that we'll be able to kind of get more money to mount a bigger festival. It's a not-for-profit film festival. We do not earn, all of us are volunteers working for the festival, but we want to mount a bigger festival. See, right now we are do just doing Liberty Cinema. A lot of, there's been a lot of demand to take it to the suburbs, um, have more screens in PVRs across Mumbai, but we don't have the budget to do that. You know, So hopefully in the future, more sponsors will come in and that's one of the things. But otherwise, there's been absolutely a huge support from the mainstream film industry. Most of the big actors have graced uh, uh, Kashish. Uh, we have had Sonam Kapoor, Arjun Kapoor, Nawazuddin Siddiqui, all the big stars of Anisha Koyalala, Juhi Chawla, all have graced Kashish in the past. You know, And uh, we also had fantastic jury members from the uh, uh, mainstream India, uh, uh, Indian film industry. So uh, there has not been such many roadblocks for Kashish, thankfully, touch wood. I head up that thing. So uh, the press has been really good. Press has always covered us. The media has always been generous. Um, so even we have been covered not just by the Indian uh, uh, English language media, but also by Marathi and Gujarati and Bengali uh, language. So it's been a good thing. But what we want to do is like, as I said, we want to expand a little more so that we can reach to a wider audience uh, across uh, Mumbai per se. And also there's been a lot of demand to bring Kashish to Goa, Delhi, that is much later. <laughs> yeah, understood. But but do you do you see a scope of how uh, Indian celebrities can come in and kind of encourage it more? Uh, I mean, do you see a scope wherein they can come in, they do something to encourage it more and take it to a bigger level? Yeah, we have had, as I said, we have had good support from the uh, 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 the celebrity actors from the mainstream cinema. Uh, but basically, they come for that opening or the closing. And they have been brand ambassadors. They, they've been talking about uh, Kashish in their own circles. So definitely, it's a good thing to have people like Sonam Kapoor and Arjun Kapoor and all of them at the festival. This year, let's see who's going to come. There's going to be a lot of celebrities coming for the opening night. On The, the festival opens on June 7th uh, at Liberty Cinema and closes on June 11th. Uh, um, it's going to be celebrating Pride Month this year. So we're hoping that a like, lot more celebrities are going to turn up at this year's edition. Yeah. Good to know. You, you in your earlier response, pointed out that uh, um, uh, almost 20% of the audience are uh, now 30%, coming from the non-LGBT. 30, yeah. So from non-LGBTQ communities. And then uh, it's it's a very bright sign uh, when you are working on such movements and such uh, activity. But uh, what more in terms of uh, public impact, if I can say, 
uh, what more you have seen uh, in terms of impact, uh, if I can uh, ask? Yeah. So I think like, I mean, uh, uh, um, the impact of Kashish can be just, I would say, measured by the quality of cinema, which has been kind of changing the Indian uh, cinema, as I said, you know, uh, it's gone from the uh, tear jerk uh, 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 negative portrayals to more positive portrayals. And also, I think we can see the uh, more stories from not just uh, urban India, but also rural India. That's a huge thing. I mean, we're not otherwise been seeing uh, films set in rural India, you know, uh, and also in different languages, you know, not just Hindi, but like other languages. And the other thing is also, I think it's uh, the films we are seeing at Kashish are more nuanced, they're more real. And they talk about the LGBTQ spectrum. Usually, mm -hmm. otherwise, films are only about gay or transgender persons, right? Most yeah, of the yeah. mainstream cinema is all about gay and transgender persons, except one film which was about a lesbian woman. But I would say that, like, I mean, uh, these short films and independent films basically showcase also, like, we have films about trans men who have not been talked about much at all. We have, we have films on non-binary uh, persons. We have films on asexual persons. So these are the spectrum which has not been explored in mainstream cinema, which is basically... And one of the things I think the moment of Kashish is also now to encourage and support um, uh, the casting of LGBTQ people in the films. You know? That's Absolutely. a huge topic right now, you know, uh, not having non-transgender persons act as transgender persons in the films. Ideally, we try to show, uh, we try to kind of show as many films uh, where transgender actors are playing transgender characters and not played by cis male or female people, you know. So that is a huge thing. And also we encourage LGBTQ filmmakers, but of course we show films from LGBTQ filmmakers or non-LGBTQ filmmakers. We're pretty much open if it's a good LGBTQ film. And also I'm seeing quite a bit of changes in the mainstream uh, uh, Indian uh, cinematic space. We have had films like Shukmangal Jada Savdan, Kuch Kati Ko Dekha To Aisa Laga, then Badai Do. And we are screening this year Majama, uh, that's going to be the highlight of the festival. Ajayba is a beautiful story about Madhuri Dixit, who, who plays a same-sex loving person, and uh, Simone Singh. So it's a beautiful uh, film, and we are showcasing this uh, this year at Kashish. Uh, I know it's on Amazon Prime, but a lot of people might not have access to Amazon, and they, we hope that they'll come to Kashish and watch it. And the cast and crew are going to be there at Kashish, so that's going to be a huge thing for them to interact with the cast and crew. So things are changing right now, and especially in the OTT space, there's a lot of change per se. Um, OTT series are basically, I think, more, much more embracing of LGBTQ diversity. They're much more honest and truthful, uh, much more realistic portrayal, much more uh, rounded up characters, fleshed out characters. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I have more hope now going forward um, with the OTT platforms and, of course, the mainstream Indian space, film space. Good to know. Now connecting it to the world of corporate now. A lot of major companies are now opening up with, in terms of their policies, in terms of their flexibility, if I can say, they're opening a lot more right now. Uh, let's take example of Tata Steel or let's say Tata Communications, Accenture, uh, RBS Bank, a lot of them are opening with the, uh, their policies and uh, their flexibility in terms of reforms uh, when uh, they are more open to welcome LGBTQ personnel in their professional uh, and careers uh, departments. Uh, that's something really uh, heartening to see when uh, it shows that we are moving towards the right way. Uh, yeah. What yeah. in your view, what in your view have been very, uh, of course the judgment, of course the judgment has been the, uh, the true catalyst, but what in your view have been more uh, uh, the, the, what should I say, the catalyst in throughout the journey uh, when we look at the corporates? So uh, the corporates have been pretty much good uh, over the last, I would say, like last 15 years, we have seen them kind of um, uh, grow up and embrace diversity. They, uh, the, these mul many multinationals across outside India too have been embracing diversity Absolutely. inclusion, like yeah. IBM and Morgan Stanley. But they've brought their same ethos to Indian uh, offices also. That's a huge thing. But also some of the Indian companies like VIP Skybags, VIP Industries, uh, Radhika Piramal is... Uh, 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 out and proud lesbian woman, and she's been leading the charge for corporate inclusion. And Godrage has been a huge uh, 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 game changer in terms of, and Mahindra's. So we have had a lot of Indian companies too, who have been progressive and embracing of LGBTQ diversity. Yeah. yeah, but the point is like, I mean, a lot of the other companies, 
uh, uh, they just come during Pride Month. They paint their uh, logos rainbow and then they disappear completely. That should not be the case. They should walk the talk and be there right through for every day of the year for the LGBTQ community. And also, I do understand the challenges for them to basically create safer environments, uh, inclusive environments. So we need to ensure. So Kashish works with a lot of corporates. We do screenings at their offices also, um, and also online and offline screenings with the corporate. And also, like we are having a roundtable discussion uh, supported by Morgan Stanley at Kashish, where we are bringing uh, uh, heads of several corporates to talk about their own journeys in terms of diversity and inclusion. You know, um, so that's uh, uh, this year we're going to be uh, doing it in th on Thursday. So uh, I think a lot of companies are opening their doors to. And also they're hiring uh, LGBTQ community members specifically, you know, and then not just for a uh, low level job, but also for middle and higher level jobs, because LGBTQ community have the same capacity as anybody else. We should of not course. basically yeah. not be differentiated and discriminated. Yeah, the transgender community needs a little bit more handholding because usually they drop out of schools and colleges, they do not have access to education. So they need a little more uh, handholding, but gay and trans, uh, gay and lesbian community have always been there. They're coming out slowly. A lot of them are still in the corporate world. They are a bit more worried to come out openly, uh, sure. but it's happening right now. And I also see a lot more openness, but among the younger persons, uh, yeah. they uh, they are much more embracing of diversity. They do not care about what your sexuality is or what your gender is. They're embracing, but it's also important that it should not be that they should not care. They should care and embrace it. You know. That's one of the things. If you do not care, then you just kind of brush it aside. Like most of them, parents, when they come to know that their gay son is gay or lesbian, they say, ah, TK, Renato. They brush it aside, you know? okay? Instead of embracing and accepting. So that's the thing. But I think uh, um, uh, 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 I would say the urban India and the rural India are more accepting. The middle two, tier two and tier three cities you know, would be the most problematic, I would say. In the villages, there's innate uh, acceptance without any questions. Uh, I mean, I've seen that, though they're not, some of them are not a quote unquote educated, lettered. So, but they basically are more sensitive and more embracing of diversity. They just, they, they, you can see that in the villages, you know, that's beautiful experience. Um, so tie two and three, three cities, people are still getting married uh, to people of the opposite, uh, gay men and lesbian people are getting married to people of the opposite sex. And that's a bit of a concern. If they want to, that's fine. But like ideally, uh, because the person, the partner is at stake, you know, I mean, they do not have any way to go for any counseling. So we are kind of so hoping that like more and more people are comfortable with their identity and accept uh, their identity openly. Uh, but I just want to mention this, um, Swikar, the Rainbow Parents, as a support group of LGBTQ, uh, parents of LGBTQ children. Uh, they're on Facebook. So they are super good. They have around 400 members on their WhatsApp group. They talk to each other all the time. They share news and also help other parents who are coming, trying to come to terms with their children's sexuality. They counsel them, you know, and they are parents of all languages and all class. And, and they're a beautiful group. Uh, so you should check out the Rain, uh, Swikar, the Rainbow Parents on um, uh, the Facebook group. And uh, if, you're, if, you're, if your mother or father is struggling to come to terms with your sexuality, you should definitely reach out to them. Good to know, good to know. Also, um, you talked about uh, tier one, tier two, tier three cities. Um, we are afraid, kind in terms of uh, a lot, a lot more people uh, can like hold themselves uh, just because they are constrained in society, and people are not not yet open uh, on that front. Are you also doing some some work on that front in terms of creating awareness, going to people and counseling them? Yeah, basically, we do not do any counseling because that's left to the NGOs, which are working with the community members. But what we do is we kind of uh, do screenings in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities of films, you know, and uh, have conversations, have panel discussions, have filmmaker interactions. We have done it in Baroda, Ahmedabad, uh, 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 Chandigarh, Lucknow. We have done some of these events, and they're really beautiful because their questions, their uh, viewpoints are quite interesting, and um, the interactions really become very interesting, per se, in those cities. And they're more engaged. Like if I screen the same films in Bombay, then like the audience are just okay, they clear nickel gay. But Bhabi logo ko jada question puch na hai, jada interact karte, and they want to know so much more, they want to interact. So that's a beautiful experience uh, uh, taking our films to tie to and try three cities per se. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, now I'd like to talk talk more on the lines of uh, uh, how you your journey uh, has been. Uh, tell us about yourself. 
how how has been your journey uh, of embracing uh, it and uh, and then towards the end of introducing this whole festival how has been you as a person who is freedher who was freedher 20 30 years ago and who, who are you now so what transformation what the journey looks like I have a diagnosis of the one sixty one now, so it's like pretty old. <laughs> so basically, I my journey has been really interesting because I uh, I was a very closeted child, very uh, introverted. I was really scared to speak up in public. I was really scared about everything. So um, I I came out to myself only when I was twenty six. That's super late for any person. Now this children yeah. come out at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You know. So uh, I came out only, in, uh, and the reason for me to come out was my friend uh, from my college basically uh, joined Bombay Dose, which was the first gay newsletter in India, you know, in 1990. And uh, when he gave me that magazine to read, I was horrified. I said, how can you put in public whatever you're thinking in private? These are very private things, uh, uh, homosexuality. Uh, I'm talking about 1990, you know. So, but then yeah. when I read the thing, I realized that, like, uh, I need to be a uh, kind of, making this my journey and my personal has to become political, you know? And then I joined Bombay Dose in 1990. Then myself and my two more friends, uh, Suhail Abbasi and Ashok Ravka, we started Hamsapa Trust in 1994. We co-founded Hamsapa Trust, which is now one of the biggest LGBTQ organizations in India right now. Uh, I was on the board for 13 years. So uh, Hamsapa Trust basically then, uh, um, and also like, I mean, uh, 2002 onwards, as I said, uh, me as a filmmaker took another turn saying that like, this is, I need to, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a gay man. Let me combine these two things to kind of create LGBTQ stories. So um, yeah, coming out to my mother was tough. Uh, that happened in 1994, 1995. Uh, I met my partner, um, Sagar Gupta, uh, who also is like, uh, we are working together, we live together. So uh, Sagar Gupta, basically I met him and then that gave me the courage uh, to kind of come out to my mother. She's from a small town. Uh, in South of India, it's very difficult for her to understand what LGBTQ life is about. So it took her a long time of, of many conversations. You can see these conversations in my feature film, Evening Shadows, which was on Netflix for three years. We hope to bring it back very soon. And we're making a sequel to Evening Shadows now. What's up, Netflix? I will, I will. <laughs> so a uh, lot of these conversations with my mother, uh, uh, what the kind of questions she had, uh, and for her to come out of her closet. When I when you when you come out of the closet, you push your parent into the closet because they're not able to confide their secret to anybody else. You know, so for them to come out of the closet, kind of embrace you openly, you know, at least reasonably within the family circles, embrace you. Uh, it's a huge journey for the parents, uh, especially people who are from the smaller towns or not so educated. I mean, my mother is, I think, twelfth pass. She, you know, for her to basically, she's not a working woman. So people, but again, it's complicated for any mother or father. It's not a happy. It's not an easy thing saying that, okay, my son is gay, I'm accepting. Some parents, but not really. Most of the parents still have doubts, uh, uh, dilemmas. They blame themselves because of me, my child has become this. All that happens per se. So it's been complicated. So, but because I, uh, my partner, uh, I met my partner and he gave me the courage to come out of my parents. And we've been living together for the last 28 years together. Uh, so it's a happy kind of, we are married almost, but we cannot marry because the law does not allow us right now. So myself and Sagar are also petitioners in the Supreme Court case uh, for marriage equality. Uh, we also petitioned, uh, uh, we are one of the petitioners. And uh, what our prayer is basically that like we need basically, uh, 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 the, we need to get married so that we can have right over each other's body. In a sense, if he falls ill or if I fall ill, we cannot sign for each other in the hospital. When the, when the critical time comes, they say only family members can sign. So we have been together for so many years. We need to be able to take care of each other and sign for each other. And that's the thing. So that's our prior to the Supreme Court saying that we should get married because we've been living together for so long and we need to have right over each other, you know, every way. So uh, we hope that like, yeah, uh, in July or June, hopefully, or June end or July, we're going to have a verdict. Uh, we don't know what the verdict is, but we are keeping our fingers crossed saying that like, yes, uh, hopefully it'll be a positive verdict. So all in all, it's been a very happening uh, journey. But uh, when no, I it's, a, it's a, no, no, it's not happening at all. It's full of anxiety. It's full of pressure. But now we're in a happy space, of course, because like I mean, I basically I need to kind of uh, um, bring anybody who comes out has to take the courage from within themselves. Outside factors are there. People can give you, ah, I'll take care of you. It's okay. I'm with you, etc. 
But the final thing is when you look into the mirror and say that like, yes, this is who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am, you know. That is the journey which every person has to take. And I think not just LGBTQ person, but anybody has to take <coughs> saying, I'm a woman, I'm a Dalit woman, I'm a, 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 a person from a different faith. Uh, so these are the things definitely we need to be kind of uh, people who are minorities, quote unquote, have to face these things uh, from the society. Society kind of, uh, 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 I would say, uh, uh, prejudiced and stereotyping minority communities. Uh, not just sexuality, sexual minority, but any minority per se. So that needs to change per se. Um, so it's been a difficult journey, but right now I'm in a happy space, of course. Uh, I don't have a home. I don't own a car. I do not have a, a big income uh, bank balance. But what am I doing with my life? I'm very happy with what I'm doing, you know? And I'm happy that like I'm able to kind of uh, not really change many lives, but even if I change one or two person's mindset, you know? and given some confidence to one or two people to come out to themselves or be comfortable with who they are, I feel my life has been worth it. So, yeah, I can peacefully die now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I have full faith in it. A lot of people would get ex inspired from you what, from what you're doing right now. And uh, throughout your journey, uh, you, are, you must have touched a lot of lives altogether, I'm sure. Uh, towards June, the Pride Month, we call it, and uh, towards the celebration of it, what will be different from uh, last June to this June now? So I think there's a lot of hope right now resting with the marriage equality. Everybody's excited about it, um, but also mindful that like marriage equality is primarily does not solve all the issues. You know, We need basically anti-discriminatory law uh, and the transgender community is faced with a lot of challenges, you know. Um, so they need a lot of more, uh, uh, I would say support, funding, a uh, handholding, uh, 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 push forward. Definitely, the transgender community is at stake right now. So we need uh, more uh, policies and uh, 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 kind of thing at the center, uh, at the state level. You know, for them to be able to kind of live their lives peacefully. So that's something we're going to highlight at the Kashish Film Festival. Uh, we're having uh, two transgender uh, uh, activists and actors coming from Bhopal called Amni and Muskan. They've, uh, they're acted in a beautiful film. It's a pleasure to see transgender people acting as transgender in a film. So there's a beautiful film called Ek Jaga Apni uh, by this Ektara Collective uh, from Bhopal. So we are inviting uh, um, Amni and Muskan to be part of the festival, present the film, and also take part of the panel discussion. So it's going to be a joy to see uh, these transgender actors uh, on stage of Kashesh. So that's the way basically we hope that like we need to uh, have, I would say, uh, I think like the LGBTQ community are tired of shouting and demanding the rights. I think it's time that the allies, everybody in the society, join forces with the LGBTQ community and say that, yes, we are with them. We want to also have these rights for them, you know. So that's, I think, the push and the move this June Pride Month, I would say, you know. Yeah, of course, I know. Uh, I mean, uh, this this should be the uh, moment this way. I, I, I totally echo this. The allies should come along and uh, show that spirit. Uh, work together and uh, bring the movement a little, a little more forward. Of course, especially for the transgender community, they need more handling and more support uh, in terms of what they are uh, witnessing right now, facing right now. Uh, before I come to the Kashish next plans and what are you planning? What do you have in your box for next year? Now, before that, uh, tell me uh, if you, I mean, if you have some, what should I say, the piece of advice, um, your suggestion, uh, any idea which can uh, which can act as a catalyst, which can uh, like fuel this movement a little more. Uh, anything you would like, like to say? I think I've said most of the things, but I'm saying like yeah, well, for the community, you need to be confident. You need to be focused about what you want and demand it per se, but not demand in an irrational way, but not demand in a very counterproductive way. But I would say work with all the stakeholders, work with all the communities across, work with the society to make sure that your demands are kind of uh, met and fulfilled, you know, that's the way I would say that. And for the non-LGBTQ community, as I said, like you need to be uh, with it. And like enough of, I would say, uh, we should move away from acceptance also. We should be more towards integration. We should be together. Uh, we should be together in all spheres, all parts of life. And whether it's a, a, a gay judge, gay lawyer, gay politician, gay actor, or, or, or lesbian uh, actor, we should be embracing of all of them. We should not discriminate. So what happens is somebody, uh, uh, some of these important people are still scared to come out because they're immediately targeted. You know, 
uh, some of the uh, actors or uh, 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 politicians who we know are queer, you know, we know who are from the community, but they're too scared to come out yet because there's too much of targeting by the society, the trolls on the social media immediately yeah. say, oh, uh, uh, you're so-and-so, and that's a bit of a scare. And so a lot of people are not coming out yet, and that needs to change because we need more role models. We need more public figures who are LGBTQ uh, uh, identified per se, who proudly say that this is who we are. And uh, they should be able to let to live peacefully. So a lot of times, like when they're in the public eye, they just bash so badly, they would actually want to go back into the closet. So that's the tragedy of the society. So that needs to change. We need to be accepting, what is it? It's just that my sexual orientation, it's just my gender oh. identity. It's just, it's nothing to do with you, right? I'm not harming you in any way. I'm coexisting with everybody peacefully. Why should I be targeted? I can, Im I can only imagine uh, how difficult, how uh, troublesome it could be for anybody who is living uh, uh, a very closeted life right now. Uh, but for your journey, for your life, who has been your motivator, who has been your inspiration, your role model, who has given you the most, uh, uh, the biggest push in your life? For me, yeah, the two people whom, with whom I started Hamsafar Trust, uh, basically Ashok Rav Kavi and Suhail Abbasi, uh, both uh, out and proud gay men. They have been my biggest support structure. They have been giving the push to me. And of course, like when I see Harvey Milk, uh, the US uh, 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 politician, uh, the courage he had uh, uh, to be outspoken. Um, so these are the people who are going to give me courage. And as a filmmaker, um, I I just love Rituparna Ghosh. Uh, uh, he has been made, made some beautiful films. I just hope that I can make those beautiful kind of films uh, in my lifetime. He made, uh, I think, four, three LGBTQ focused films, totally focused on LGBTQ lives, you know, and they've been good successes and they've been landmark films. So Rituparna Ghosh is somebody whom I admire completely. And uh, yeah. Good to know, good to know. Just just my final question. Uh, what do we have special for questions coming up? Uh, what new can we expect in 2023 and beyond also? So yeah, uh, uh, Kashish 2023 is going to be, as I said, starting on June 7th, ending on June 11th. For four and a half days, you're going to be seeing 129, 110 films from 41 countries, uh, out of which there are many feature films. The opening film is going to be Owner's uh, Pinecone. is a world premiere. The film has never been shown, so we're going to be showing it for the first time at Kashish. And Owner is a path-breaking, uh, out and proud gay filmmaker. We really support, happy to have his support for the festival. And also we'll be closing with the a film called When Time Got Louder. Uh, it's a beautiful Canadian film made by, a, again, a queer uh, identified woman filmmaker. And she has, again, used a queer identified uh, uh, actors. And also the film is about uh, 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 autism. The film is also about autism and sexuality. So it's a beautiful synergy of both these ideas in the last closing film. So uh, that's the thing. And in between, as I said, like, we are showing Majama, we are showing Ek Jaga Apni. And we are showing this beautiful, I think the first ever uh, a gay film, LGBT film from Assam called Satya, the two. Uh, these are the some of the films to watch out for, per se. Of course, there are many films. And we're going to be having at the opening night, uh, uh, Opera Tang, uh, drag queen from Singapore, coming in and performing. So you should attend the opening for sure so that you can catch Opera Tang. And of course, many more, which I can't reveal right now. It's too early to reveal. It'll all reveal. So we have having a great performers from the community, and from allies too, uh, on the opening and the closing. So be there for sure. And the Good theme is this year is, and the theme this year is be, be fluid, be you. Yeah, yeah be so, fluid. Uh, be, oh, be fluid, be you, that's the theme. So basically like, I mean, uh, uh, we all have to embrace a fluidity uh, in terms of our sexuality, in terms of gender, in our day-to-day -day fluidity per se, in a fluidity of thoughts. So that's the theme this year. We want to kind of give Wings to all the people who have been marginalized uh, within the LGBTQ community uh, to be more free and open. So that's the theme. And we're hoping that like a lot more youngsters come to uh, the festival. We want more students and youngsters to come, but only about 18. We do not allow anybody under 18 to the festival. So if you're about 18 and young, there's a student discount pass also available. So we're encouraging a lot more youngsters because they are, the, they are going to be the future of tomorrow. Uh, they, are the, they are the change makers of tomorrow, per se. So we want more youngsters to come to the festival. Good to know. It's been a very inspirational conversation for me. Uh, this was Frida who, who said that don't brush it aside, embrace it. Uh, and also, uh, you're calling allies to come together uh, in, into this movement. Just don't talk about walk the talk, 
instead and also transgender community needs more hand holding uh, this would be the more focus on for kashish uh, as well you will try to uh, i mean call it out just just so that transgender community need more support and get it uh, across the um, the departments and areas uh, and also uh, your your final message with the theme be fluid be you let the borders get blurred and uh, eliminate it completely be you and embrace it completely thank you so much it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you shridhar thank you so much and all the very best for kashish thank you reshim it's been a pleasure to talking to you and i hope we kind of reach this messages across through your medium to many people across the world thank you i'm sure i'm sure thank you so much this this just uh, uh, came to me onir is a good friend and uh, raga or the silva so right she's going to be hopefully she's trying to kind of be here she's trying to come to mumbai okay. this uh, yeah she's trying to come <laughs> do that she messaged me last night saying that i'm trying to come to kashish let's see how that goes <laughs> interesting interesting <laughs> so we we did a similar conversation with onir uh, in uh, a year ago I, this was and i not uh, getting the date clearly so it's okay. it's always okay. been very lovely and very inspiring to talk to you people who are in charge of the movement altogether so really thank you lovely lovely thing with you thank you bye bye thank you